In IIB, we know that we have something called a palette and a canvas. The canvas being the white empty area to the right of the node palette. So what we're going to do in this, ex um, this video is in our IIB Basics book, so this is the 2005 book, WebSphere Basic Broker, uh, Web Message Broker Basics, chapter four has several examples working with something called ESQL. And we're going to do the first example here, so you can consider this uh, a lab video. And eSQL is essentially, as it'll say here, based on, it is based on structured query language. And what it does is it allows you to transform a message. It lets you do the translation, the brokering feature we've been talking about up until now. Now, we're not going to, in this video, do much with the eSQL portion of things, but we are going to follow that first example. And there are lots of details even before it starts, so I'll, if you're interested, I'll let you read through that. It is also interesting to see the message tree, but we'll cover that a little bit later. Again, this is mostly just a sort of practical, very simple but practical example. And remember, too, that this is the message flow, and also remember that a message flow is nothing more than an actual application. And you can see that here. Message flows are programs that provide the logic that the broker uses to process messages from business applications. Message flows are created by connecting nodes together, and each node provides some sort of basic logic. And again, just so you know, a node is simply a message. A message flow node is a processing step in a message flow. All right, so let's move down, and you can follow along. You'll probably uh, find some of these notes uh, useful here because the broker application development is actually now called the IIT development perspective. So just so you get an idea of some of the names that have changed. And this is also interesting here, the execution group. Remember that we had looked at this uh, diagram from before, and we had said that the integration node is the broker and it is in fact the runtime but inside that node you have the integration server and that was formerly called the execution group what we're about to see is that the naming convention that IIB uses it still uses the EG naming so EG for execution group and then the integration node it still calls a broker we'll see that in just a second okay and moving down here, the configuration manager. Again, there's there's some interesting uh, details here, but what we're really going to do is uh, start with that uh, start with that example. So let's let's do that. The first thing to do is create what's called a project, and we're going to go file new integration project. And if you're following along in the book, you'll see that it actually is, has a different name. So it was formerly called. Just let I'm scrolling down here. here we go a message flow project. Again, it's no longer called that. It that was a deprecated name. It's now called an integration project, and it's actually fairly straightforward. If you go in here, you'll see uh, it'll ask you for a name. I'm going to call this one ESQL Simple Project, and then notice what happens on the right on the left side we see application development and we have something called independent resources so just for if you haven't seen that term before a resource is a project a folder and fi or folders and files that you work with in IBM integration toolkit and you can see here how this is sort of laid out this is a quick sort of sketch of that and essentially they are the files that you'll be working with so just to give you um, an idea of what to expect here and let's go back okay so what we want to do is create a message we're gonna hit new here we're gonna create a message flow why are we doing that well you'll see in a second that it will expose our palette to us so a message flow name I'm just gonna call this I'm just gonna call this e sequel flow and we'll click and we're gonna keep default broker schema checked and click on finish and then that of course exposes the palette and another quick so this by the way is the canvas we had talked about this is the palette of course we called these groups before and actually that is accurate although if you want to get a better idea of uh, the actual names that they use you can right click and select customize where you'll see that they're actually called drawers and each of the drawers can open up and expose the different 
nodes inside them. So MQ input is our node, MQ output is a node. And all we're going to do in this example is put the node here, our input here, and we're going to put our output over here, and we're going to join them. And, and notice too that the you have uh, on your input, MQ input, and by the way, the MQ input node, all it's going to do is interact with MQ and go f open up AQ. That's the input. And then it will p output the whatever you're working with, put it into AQ. That's the idea of MQ input and output. And if you look at these sort of pieces here, these small little buttons on the right, these tell you things that you can do uh, to this once it's been processed. Notice that there are no inputs here. They're essentially outputs is what these are. There are no inputs here. There are little outputs though. The top one says what to do during a failure. The middle one is what to do when you're going to output something. And then the last one tells you what to do in a catch case where something went wrong. And what we're going to do is connect these two. So notice this is the output, of course, and this is the input for the node itself, right? The names are different, of course, because it's getting input from AQ. It's going to put the output in AQ, but inside the node, the node itself has inputs and outputs. So we're going to take the output of the first node and connect it to the input of the second node, right like that. And now we have a, essentially we have almost built a flow. And the whole purpose of this flow, sometimes it's hard to get this lined up, but the whole purpose of this flow is to just go into a queue on MQ and this queue, by the way, is called E SQL simple in and E SQL simple out. And the book explains how to create these, but really all you're going to do is right click on queue and you know make a new one. And these are local queues, so uh, I've already done that. And the idea here is we're going to put a message into this queue. So, well, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to connect the two queues together. So, if you put a message here, for example, right click and put a test message. Normally, MQ would it would just say sit there. The message is going to not move. It's going to be there. But if you set up this IIB like we're going to do, it's going to put the message. Uh, once you put the message in this queue, IIB will move it. So now we're getting into some logical things you can do that MQ cannot, and it's going to move it over to the out queue. Just as simple as that to give you an idea of how this works.